Hi right, guys, so on the bench today we have Beta FPV's new BT 2.0 Power Whoop Connector. They're hailing this as the successor to the PH2 connector, and I think it looks like a pretty interesting product. So let's go ahead and get one out, and we'll take a look at some details on it. Alright, so I've got a mated pair here, male and female BT 2.0 connector. As you can see, they are gold-plated. They have a flat on the edge of the contact that you'll be soldering to on all four of them. Pulling this apart, these pull apart very nicely. I would say they pull apart even easier than an XT30. They have a what looks to be a solid gold-plated pin on the female side. No, I guess this would be the male side. On the male side, and they have a socket on the female side that's also gold-plated. It has a slit straight down the middle to allow it to spread out and allow it to have better contact. Let's take a look at a size comparison between this and a PH2 connector. You can see they're, they're fairly similar. The BT2 is actually smaller in length depending on which kind of connector you get. This is the folded sheet metal style that you'll see on most whoops. As far as disconnecting and connecting, the PH2 connector is generally fairly difficult to get apart, especially if you're just pulling on the connector. I'm really struggling to get this apart, so usually end up pulling on the wires. The BT2 connector is very smooth, very easy to take apart. I really like that. Let's take a look in comparison to an XT30. Uh, it makes the XT30 look positively gigantic. It's, it's a lot smaller. As far as force to take it apart, the XT30 is quite a bit more difficult to take apart than the BT2. Other than that, uh, it looks like a, a fairly well-designed product. I think that it'll hold up well. The manufacturing feels very precise. I've connected and disconnected several of the ones in the bag into each other, and they all have about have the same resistance to being pulled apart and being pushed together, which means that the manufacturing tolerances are pretty good. Um, one thing I noticed that in this bag, there are no pieces of heat shrink that you would normally get, like if you bought some XT30s, so you'll have to provide your own heat shrink when you solder onto these. Should be pretty easy to solder onto. You just add a little bit of solder onto there, add a little solder onto your wire, and then touch them together, put your heat shrink on, and you're done. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take these connectors, and what I've done here is I've got a PH2 connector, which is the typical folded sheet metal kind, Got a wire connected to each one of these. I got the BT 2.0 connector. I got a wire on these. And then I've also got an XT30. I don't have any wire on these, and I'll show you why in a minute. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take each one of these in, in turn, and I'm going to connect them to a precision power supply that I have at running at 4.5 amps. You can see here. And then I'm going to use my Fluke 45 bench multimeter. And we're going to test the voltage drop across these, see how they compare as far as voltage drop. Okay, so 4.5 amps. This is the PH2 connector, and I'm going to be measuring the, just the connector itself. So we'll go from this point right here to this point right here. And as you can see, we've got 13, 14-ish millivolts. And that's the voltage drop right across the connector itself at 4.5 amps. So let's hook up an XT30 real quick. I don't need to have wires on these because the connectors will just hold right on, he says. There we go. So we get the XT30 hooked up. And we'll turn on the output. And let's measure the voltage drop across here. And we're looking at around 2 millivolts. So that would be something like 7 times less voltage drop than the PH2 connector. So now let's test out the new BT2 connector. Got the same setup here with the BT2. It's going to hook up the wires. Let's let this stabilize. And we're looking at right around 3 millivolts. So... We've got 
14 millivolts, just to write around 13, 14 millivolts for this folded sheet metal PH2 connector, 2 millivolts for an XT30, and 3 millivolts for this new BT 2.0 connector. So this BT 2.0 connector at, at 4.5 amps is showing around 50% higher voltage drop than an XT30, but much more importantly, it's showing less than a quarter of the voltage drop of these PH2 connectors. And that makes sense. These PH2 connectors were never designed as high current carrying connectors. And especially these cheap, crappy folded sheet metal ones, these are designed for you know use in electronics, for, for data carrying and that kind of thing. They just they ended up getting used because they were small and they were convenient. What I want to do now is I'm going to take my Tiny Hawk S with the stock battery, and I want to do a kind of a flight around my house, just keep flying around and around and around until the battery dies, and see how long the battery lasts, and also kind of see how it feels. This is going to be a very subjective test, as I'm sure you can imagine. But then I want to put the BT2 connector on the battery and the quad and fly it and just see how it feels see if maybe it feels like there's more flight time or if it punches out better you know that kind of thing okay so conclusion time i only showed you the one punch out because the rest of the flight basically followed suit everything was better. The punches were better, the power was more, the flight was a little bit longer, it just subjectively it felt better. I really really like these new BT 2.0 connectors. They feel really nice, they are built well, they flow a ton more current than the humble PH2 connector. There are some downsides. The first one being, it's a pain to solder. It's tiny, and it, it you know, especially when you're dealing with short cables, it, it's a pain. The other downside is they're fairly expensive. They are, I think, eight bucks for a pack of five. I expect that price to come down. The primary problem, though, is that of use cases. On this Tiny Hawk S, with its wired batteries and running on 1S primarily, that's how I run it, I think it's a good use case. However, a lot of people, you know, their 1S quads use the little stick packs that have the connector that's built right into the, the LiPo, and with that, you know, you really can't change that connector. I mean, you could, but it's not going to be very easy, so that's going to be a no-go for them unless they want to switch over to the beta FPV batteries. I don't have very much experience with those batteries. I looked it up. They are more expensive than a lot of your other options, so you're going to be paying a premium for that. The other possible use case would be for, uh, say, 2S quads, because as we saw in the testing, this connector is fairly close in performance to the X-T30. But the problem with that is, is most people with 2S quads are going to be running an XT30 already because the majority of 2S LiPos come with a, with an XT30 connector on them and the XT30 is a good connector for that size of quad. So basically it's a great connector. I'm just not sure how it's going to fit into the market because right now it's only being sold by Beta FPV and they have one quad, the Meteor 65, that they sell it with, and then they sell the connectors separately. I have eight or nine micro quads, and out of all of those, there's only one, just this one, that these connectors will be appropriate for. Now, for this quad, it's fantastic, but until the market opens up, maybe some other manufacturers start making the same connectors, which, of course, then you run into quality issues, I'm not sure. I really am not sure what place these connectors will have in the market. But if you have a 1S quad and these connectors can work for you, you know, you ha your batteries have wires on them to where you can switch them out, and you're currently using a PH2 connector, I strongly suggest switching over to this. It's a great little connector, and it really does increase the performance of these quads. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We got plenty more good stuff coming up soon. 
Leave a comment if you have any questions down there, and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notified. I've got 700 subscribers now. I'm really looking forward to getting to 1,000. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.